Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I am a storyboard artist for animation and an illustrator. And today what we're going to do is hopefully a rather quick um, illustration piece. Um, this is uh, a, a piece I'm doing for a friend of mine, um, Brian Colm. He gave me this wonderful little creature here to name for his guardian his spirit little spirit guardian registration and i have named him helger of the wild wisewood and helger here is kind of a bunny like critter and um i am going to paint him today and i wanted to show you first how i start this particular piece of paper has been cut from watercolor block um this is uh Arches Hot Press, um, 300 gram, 140 pound watercolor paper. And what I'm doing is I'm taping it down to, this is a piece of Plexi. Um, I also use, um, I'm really good at using canvas, canvas board as a backing. This is your standard canvas board that you use for um, doing acrylic paintings that you usually can get for like a um, couple of bucks a piece at like Michael's or any art supply store. And what I find is that I, I like to tape watercolor paper to the back of them. You can tell, oh, excuse me, didn't mean to disturb the camera. Um, but I usually use these, you can tell this board has been used several times because it'll tape down, it'll take the, the Scotch magic tape or a magic tape, um, We'll tape to the paper surface. I don't care if this paper surface gets ripped up and um, it'll hold tight so that your watercolor paper can, it, it'll buckle when you add too much water to it and then it'll, it'll flatten out as it dries when it's tight to the, the board. And this works really well for that purpose. What I'm using now is a piece of Plexi because it looks better on camera and it'll work the same way. So you can use a piece of um, like plexiglass that you'd get for a cheap frame. And right now I'm taping this down with um, Scotch Magic Tape. And what that'll do is if there's too much water on my um, watercolor paper, the paper will buckle, but it'll flatten down as it dries. And I probably am not going to be using enough water on this piece to cause any problems like that but um, this is just to be on the safe side so that that the paper itself doesn't buckle and a way you can avoid that too is by buying watercolor blocks where they have glue around the outer edge and I use a lot of watercolor blocks as well when I'm painting but in this case I'm just going to use this is scotch magic tape this is a piece of plexi and I'm just taping it down as I slide everything off camera again um, to the plexi. Now I'm using a Cotman um, traveling watercolor kit uh, to paint this with because it's easy. Again, it fits in camera and you can see what I'm mixing. And what I wanted to do is to start to show you, okay, right now I've been, I've been using it to paint other things. So the palette itself is full of color. So I want to get rid of that color. I'm just going to take my um, um, paper towel here and I'm just going to wipe it out. Just, just, you know, can you can take and put it under um, the faucet if you want to. This is just a really quick way to just clean your palette without, you know, you, after you've worked on another piece of um, watercolor and just take your, your paper towel and just clean that out and it, it'll be ready for um, using as a palette again. So that's all, our palette is all ready to go now. Now what I'm gonna do too is I've done a, an underdrawing of Helgar here with pencil, and I do a really, really loose underdrawing, but I always want to tell, I talk about, um, this is a kneaded eraser. This has been cut from, it was like a four inch square I got from Blick. I'll get their big kneaded eraser, and then I'll cut off pieces from it, and then you can just um, peel the cellophane away. Just, I, I wanted to show you exactly what this, this um, type of eraser looks like when you first get it. And you just, um, you can either cut a piece off with scissors. I never need more than about that much to work with, but you can just cut it off with scissors or um, leave it the way it is. You can tell this, this piece has been cut with the scissors. 
but um, again, it's like silly putty. So that that or they used to use bread dough in the Renaissance um, as an eraser. And then you take that, and I'm going to clear back the um, the underdrawing that I have on Helga here, because um, the glue in the um, the glue in the uh, in the watercolor, the gum arabic, will cause your um, it'll glue the the graphite to the paper as well. So I'm I want to get rid of the the graphite that I don't want in the underdrawing. And you can see now he's he's basically a very very loose um, pen drawing. The pen drawing is done with ballpoint pen with big stick and when we get done with our painting I'm going to go back over the the initial drawing that I did of Helgar here now I'm going to put him right here in the picture so so I can see he's my model because I want to do him it's kind of a return gift to Brian because he he did this marvelous little creature for me so I want to send back one to him and I'm going to use two brushes this is a um, a uh, number two Windsor Newton Series 7 Sable Brush, and this is a Zero a Windsor Newton Series 7, Series 7 Sable Brush. And these are two of my old workhorses. I've had these two brushes for probably about 10 years, and they're, they're sold. You can see that I'm, I've worn off the gold on the brushes themselves, and I am miserable with my brushes. I really um, work them to death. So that can tell you that um, the Series 7 tend to be expensive, but they're worth the money. I, I highly recommend them. They are very much worth the money. And what we're going to start um, on Helger here is he's a white rabbit, right? So I want to give him, put in some shadow on him first. So um, I'm taking, I've got um, this particular, um, Cotman has um, Sienna. It's not a black. This is more of a, a or a sepia think did I yeah so I'm mixing up a little bit of this sepia here and um, I'm gonna stick with just the sepia and maybe yeah as I'm trying to make decisions this is um, a little bit of a um, an alizarin crimson it's a little bit of a red. Maybe this is this right here is um, burnt sienna. A little bit of warm in there. So this is going to be my shadow color. And because he's a, a white rabbit, I want to thin that down. And we're gonna I'm gonna put in the shadow on him. And we're gonna have the um, light is gonna come in from this direction. So I'm gonna put the shadow. On the back side of his ear here and that's a little heavy so I'm gonna blot that with my paper towel and I'll do the back side ear here and a little bit of the inside of the ear because what I'm probably going to do is um, put a little pink I'll just fill in that ear because it's in the shadow and then he's under the hat here. I'm going to put this. Maybe use this as my shadow color for, for the whole thing. Um, watercolor is a transparent medium. So sometimes this is one technique that you can do is put down your shadows first. Keep them light. Um, whenever you're doing anything in watercolor, it's always best to start light and then come in dark. Because um, once you get it dark, it's really tough to go the other direction. You can um, fix going too dark by adding water to a, uh, a piece that you've already put the paint down on. But it won't always pull, nothing will ever pull back to the white. But the, the one way you can pull back to the white is by um, using a razor blade. And if you've got good paper, like I said, this is Arches, and Arches is very good paper. It's made in France. It's what's um, it's a mold paper. 
it's handmade and it's very thick like i said it's it's um 300 gram or 140 pound paper so it's very thick so that if you do make a mistake and you want to take it back with um a knife you can and it won't um destroy the paper okay. so you can tell we're, we're going through and we're putting in all the shadows here first and put on the side of his nose there we go ah and his tail can't forget the tail and the other thing is is when you're doing watercolor you want to go around to different areas because you can tell it's like this area is more or less dry now let me get that little fuzz out of the way um you can tell where areas have already started dry like this area is still a little bit damp and wherever it's um dry you can start going painting over and this and this technique that i'm doing right now is called um jeez oh, never had the problem before i'm using um music on youtube and oddly enough their advertisement is kicking in and i've never had that happen before i'm gonna probably start using another service for um the music in my background um but for now <laughs> You'll have to excuse the occasional interruptions. Um, anyways, next thing I'm going to paint is his ear. I'm going to go, go in there with the pink. Painting the inside of the ear. And that's a little heavy for me right now. And I want it more heavy on the inside. So I'm going to take my paper towel and dab that lightly. And so, so I've got the darker down here and lighter up there. And I want him to have a little pink nose, so we're going to take a little bit of that pink, put it on his nose. And he's got um, a red top, so I've got a little bit of, of I've obviously been mixing in some other um, paint on this red. So I'm going to pull it out to the side here. And it's a little bit to the orange side. This particular red is a... Um, I would say a cadmium red medium. And I'm going to pull in a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is a purplish red. And I'll put that into there to get it more of a darker red. And maybe just, just a hint of, I've got some cobalt blue here. There. And that'll darken up that red. So that it's it's not quite as orange. The thing is, is that this, this is... um said it's a travel kit so if you get cotman travel kit they'll come with these colors um and they may not be there's all different kinds of reds and all different kinds of, of um, um colors that you can get if you're ordering colors say from um, i like to order um stuff from black they're not paying me um or sponsoring me on this particular video um it's just a matter of their their prices are very reasonable um, another good place to get um, art supplies is Cheap Joe's. Um, if you um, are living in a place that doesn't have any kind of um, art supply store nearby, um, they're good places to um, get your, your materials. Um, I, like I said, I like Blick because it's got a, a wide variety of materials. They always have what I want and very reasonable prices. Uh, especially for watercolor blocks. Um, I really like their prices on watercolor blocks are very reasonable because they're rather expensive. And uh, you'll find that um, they have uh, good sales and their prices are reasonable. Okay, so there we got a red boots. Now he's got some, uh, uh, um, let's see here, his uh outfit there is kind of to the brown side so i'm gonna take he's got like a almost a golden brown i'm going too red here that's a problem too if you're trying to get orange and i'm gonna clean that up because it's gotten way too dark um if you're trying to get um a yellow to go orange warning about mixing red in it will turn uh very quickly so as you're adding, say, red into a yellow to get it to go orange, 
add it very gradually because otherwise you'll find that it it'll go the wrong color real fast now yeah, that's very close to what he's got on his it's more of a kind of a golden brown is what he's got for his cool dress like outfit here and I say it's a he just because he's got a little goatee, so it, it's got to be a he, right? Because personally, I don't know a lot of girls who have goatees, but I could be wrong. Um, might be his his particular type of magical species, and I'm wrong, and he's actually a she. But since I guess I got to name him, and I decided he's a, a he, he's a he. Okay. So now we're going to let this dry because I want to put a design on the top of that. So I want to make sure that that's pretty dry before I go into that. So I think I'm going to paint his hat next. And his hat is somewhere between burnt sienna and the alizarin. So I'm going to, uh, that looks pretty right. Now if that's not dark enough, I'll let that dry and go over it one more time. It looks like this has pretty dark color. That's looking good. And I think I'm probably going to go over that one more time because it's like the red here has dried um, pretty brown. Um... So I think I'm going to go over his hat and give the, the, that color a little bit more of a... There we go. And I might go over that one more time to give it a little bit more red. And that's that's the thing with... Yeah. That's the problem with the... With the... Oh, my apologies. Trying to get. I never had that problem with YouTube before. Oh well, my pro my problem in here. But anyways, um. So we're we're uh, putting some more red. This again, it's a lizard and crimson. And I'm gonna put a little bit more in his ear too. So I want his ear to go a little bit back. There we go, that's better. I wanted a little bit more depth in that ear. Um, okay, now this, this area is dry enough now. I'm going to trade my brushes because I want a little bit of detail on, on the, uh, on his, on his, uh, overcoat there. And we have like triangles. his design and I'm not real um, tight with my graphics here I'm doing lines but you can tell I'm not super super tight and that's a combination of style and skill and what you want if you wanted a tighter line that would be up to you. Um, I, and you can tell too, if my, I get too much liquid on the brush, you can always take it and you scrape it on the edge and that'll take the extra liquid out. Put the mountains, put it on his front of his shirt. And give him some pokey dots. And we're getting close to, uh, I'm going to put triangles in here.
Now, what I'm thinking too is I'd like to give them some purple shadows. Now, it's not really good to give your shadows um, after the fact because you're going to be changing the color. If you have like a design like this, it's better to do it over the shadow instead of trying to throw shadow on top of that again because what will happen is um, if the, the design isn't dry enough, um, your design is going to end up often um, bleeding into the shadow or the shadow is going to end up bleeding into the design. So that's why if you can, you want to get your, most of your shadow down first. Um, and I'm thinking I didn't get my shadow down as I'm telling you, okay, don't get your shadow too dark. I'm going, ah, I didn't get my shadow quite dark enough and I'll have to go back in and uh, um, beef up some of the shadows. Now you'll notice too, I'm putting yellow down and this yellow, if you put it down too heavy, it's, it gets chalky. So you got to be careful with some, some of your colors like the reds and the yellows have a tendency to have more pigment in them. Um, browns will have more pigment in them. Greens are more dye based. Um, some of your blues um, have some interesting foxing qualities. Now that's a little bit too heavy of a yellow. So there, I just picked the whole thing up. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to go back in with the yellow again. Now I'm going to go in with, um, I am thinking a little bit, a little, little bit of a, um, a purpley, um, um, shadow. So I'm taking, um, this is a little bit of, um, Prussian blue which is a little bit to the green side. Um, and I'm taking some, I've got some, again, lizard crimson. What I was calling a lizard crimson before is actually an Indian red. Yeah, I'm having troubles getting my, getting water into this lizard. There we go. Sometimes certain colors will have troubles reconstituting. And th what that is, is that it's the, the way the pigment works with the um, gum arabic. Okay, so now I've got my my uh, purple here that I want to use for a shadow. I'm going to get that, use that for the shadow under the hat. And this is what I was talking about on the yellow here keep it a little bit light. I might have to go back and uh, clean up the uh, designs again. I'm not sure. So we're getting a little bit heavy up here because that shadow is looking a little bit darker than what's underneath here. We want the, the area under the hat to be darker. And I'm going to give just a little purple. To this area here. And throw a little purple blue under here in his ear. And I'm, I'm giving some purple in different areas just to give add a little bit of interest to the color overall. And blue shadows, blue and purple in the shadows always add a little bit of interest. 
Okay, and then I need to give him, I'm going to give him um, just a fun background to give him some t added texture. So I'm going to use the purple and blue here that I've got in a mixture to just um, around him. This is just going to give him a little bit of texture and interest and make it a little bit more fun. So then that's the color, the, and also because he's white, um, a color in the background will make it more interesting. I'm not really giving him much of a background. I'm just kind of, you know, like I said, um, just throwing a color back there to make it more interesting. It could have been um, uh, green or yellow. Yellow wouldn't have been very good because he's, he's got white fur. Um, so we got a little bit nice cheek there. And you notice I'm not real worried about one color bleeding into another in the respect that what that does is it, it gives more volume to the piece. Just a little. There we go. And if, if that, that bothers me too much when it dries, when it dries it should probably dry pretty light. But if it's really bothering me, again, I'll scrape it away with a knife so you don't have to worry about overshooting because there's always a way you can you know like i said go in with a knife or clean it out with some water um, i am not perfect in my placement of color all the time And again, I'm, I'm kind of giving these little dots more or less to just give some added interest and texture. And it's, it's, it's a, um, I've always done it. It's, it's just, it's me in particular. And also, um, it's kind of a calligraphy. It's like, if you did the same technique that I'm doing for, for the background, I'm like, ugh, a little bit too much paint there on my palette. Um, if you were doing the same technique that I'm doing, it would not come out the same, even though you're doing the same technique I'm doing. Because the thing is, is with watercolor and with paint in general, um, it's like your handwriting. No matter, even if you're using a similar technique to what I am doing, it's not going to look the same. Because your, the way you use your brush strokes and the way I use my brush strokes and your choice of placement of um, the uh, the extra um, texture is not going to be the same as I I do it. It's not going to be the same um, look. It, 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 it just won't be the same. So the thing is, is that don't worry that, okay, Lynn does hers this way. If I do mine this way, it'll look like Lynn's. And it's like, eh, not really. It'll just be a, a, your way of doing it in a similar fashion. So if, if you like what I'm doing here, don't think that, that okay, if I do it like that, they're, they're going to think that, you know, it's one of Lynn Hunter's pieces. It's Everybody's style is different just because of the way that you paint and apply the brush and do a line. Okay, so we more or less have our, our, uh, our, uh, wise man of the woods our spirit guardian done here i'm going to put a little bit more detail i said give him a little bit of interest um now i'm going to stop the camera for a second because this is um a little wet and i want to finish this off by um, showing you how I finished the pen work. And if I, uh, he's been out of camera all this time. My apologies. Um, but, uh, um, when I put the pen line down right now, it's still a little damp. So I'm going to take three minutes here and use my good old handy dandy. This is a blow dryer, you know, when you've got a painting that's too wet and you want to get to work on it right away, pull out a blow dryer. Okay, so we're going to stop for just a second here. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm going to 
zoom in maybe just a little bit. There we go. Nah. And I'm sorry because I, I put poor Helgar out of the shot there so you couldn't really see him. My apologies. He really is adorable. You can tell Brian Brian um, um, wrote on the back with it. He uh, put his name there. I, I put on that I, I called him Helgar of the Wise Woods. And you can tell he, he cut, he uh, laser cut this baby. He's really wonderful. I'm going to go in and now, now that the, the painting is dry, I'm going to go in with the, uh, oh, and I see, okay, I've seen a couple of things that I missed, which I'm going to go back in and take care of. I missed this area right here and I did not paint his beard. So I got to go back and paint his beard. Shame on me. And what I'm doing right now by going over with this with a pen again is I'm darkening up all the lines. Because when um, ballpoint pen will um, dissolve a little bit, not much, when you've added uh, your paint over the top, it's um, very water resistant. Um, if you've ever um, had a ballpoint pen explode in your pocket and uh, try to clean it out of your clothing, you'll find how difficult and uh, it is to get rid of ballpoint pen. Well, the thing is, is that this is, think about the fact that this um, paper is 100% cotton fiber. Um, and you are, I am grinding <laughs> ballpoint pen ink into cotton fiber. Um, this stuff will not, it does not fade real well. It's, it, if you want non-fading ink, definitely use India. I mean, it won't ever fade because it's made out of carbon. It's carbon in, imbued in um, a varnish. So India ink is, is probably the most permanent ink. If you want to do an underpainting that will last longer than the paint you put on top of it, use India ink. Um, I suspect the ballpoint pen, I know ballpoint pen will last at least 100 years. Um, I know that uh, uh, probably even longer than that. Um, if you keep it out of the sun, and most people don't hang their paintings directly in the sun. Um, most people too use, you know, they're, they're not putting the paintings up. If you put a painting up on a wall, you're usually not putting it in direct sunlight. Um, so most of your paints, if you use professional, one of the reason why you want to use professional grade watercolor is because most of them are, the, the more professional grade your watercolor, um, the less fugitive it, fugitive it is. And now it looks like I smeared a little right there. Um, that can be taken care of with, again, a, um, a knife. I can scrape it away and um, fill it in with a little bit of paint. So, and also there's a portion of his eye that I overfilled that I think that I want to get rid of. So I might take care of that on camera for you. Um, because what happens with the ballpoint pen too, it, it builds up on the ball. So sometimes you want to wipe it off. I'm trying to get a, a rather heavy line here. I'm a scribbler, which is why, you know, this ballpoint pen really works well for me because if I want to get a nice clean line, you can tell I, I'm i doing several lines to get that nice, nice thick line. Because I, I don't have a real steady hand. And um, when I do pen and ink, um, when I use Indian ink, it, uh, I still don't have quite the steady hand you need to have. And 
and you can see it glopped right there and I'm spreading the ink around. Um, if you've used a lot of ballpoint pen or if you haven't used a lot of ballpoint pen, um, most people use it like in, in high school they, or junior high, it's their first use of ballpoint pen as a drawing tool. It um, has some wonderful qualities to it and I actually, I kind of like the glopping. I like it when it punctuates, especially when I'm doing more loose drawings. But I'm heavying up, you know, all these, the um, more loose lines that I had before. So it gives a more of a, a solid quality to the drawing. And it gives more definition. There we go. Okay. I think that's pretty good on Helder. One of the, so I'm going to go back and let me see if I got my knife. Yeah, I do. Okay, you can use um you can use either uh this is just a straight old exacto knife blade. And what I'm going to do and see, I, I, I did a little bit of smearing the ink right here. And I'm just scraping that back. And you can tell the paint underneath is not even going quite away because I didn't, I didn't smear it too badly. And I'm going to let that sit for a bit there. And see, I, I made this little niche of a line right near his eye that I don't like. I'll clean that up too. Now, if I what I should do is let this sit for an hour or so. Because um, that will cure the ink. The ink will totally dry in place. And it won't smear again. Because I've got some small blots that um, might smear if I um, get the eraser on them. But right now, because I want to show you guys what I'm doing, I'm going to blot that. And what, that does, what I'm doing right now with the kneaded eraser is I'm taking up the fibers. And there's other... There's a little bit of a some goofs here See? and I'm just scraping them back looks like I got some somehow I got some smearing here and there's And what I'm trying to show is, is that, see, you got, I got some smears, I got some goofs, and I'll let the, just a little bit of, it's almost like sanding with sandpaper, and get, and you just, you sand it down to the next, you know, just a little layer of paper. It's not even, you're not even taking it down. So what you want to do is you use your kneaded eraser to blot up the little fibers. And then use the kneaded eraser to burnish them down. And then right here, I'm going to go back to where uh, I had the ballpoint pen smear. I still have a little bit of ink there. And you want to go maybe one direction and then the other. And you just want to like shave away the little fibers of paper. Okay, now you notice um, I've gotten down to the white there. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to take, uh, let's see, we've got a little bit of purple, and I'm going to get just a little bit of my brush there, and I'm going to blot it. Get blue in there. So what I'm going to do is again, and you'd never know that I had a mistake there. Okay. Like I said, the area around his eye here, there's still a little fiber there. Um, I'm just going to scrape it a little bit more. And I'm using the tip right now to cut it away. And I'm going to go back in there with an eraser, but not quite right now. And we've got to do his beard and the area underneath his chin there that I forgot. And again. Okay, now I got a little bit too dark in that area. Um, didn't want to. Oh, I like that better. And this is why I'm saying, you know, when you make mistakes, you can use them. I like the, the little bit of extra color that I put in there. So I'm going to add some more. So utilize your mistakes. I mean, it's, is it a mistake or is it just a change? And then of course I gotta do his beard. That's his little goatee. It's actually more of a goatee than a beard. And then while I'm here, I didn't put any uh, Put a little bit of shadow underneath these little buttons on his hat. Hmm. And there's a little bit of this coat right here that I missed. It's a little dark, so blot that right here. I think we're done with Helgar. Um, what I would like to do is, let's see here, I'm going to blot his, this is the kneaded eraser again, I'm just going to blot that area under his eye, and I took the fibers away. And again, I might go over this one more time, once everything, once everything is like totally, totally dry, and I'll see things, you know, an hour later that um, I want to take care of. And real fast, uh, I want to show you how to take the tape off of your draw your painting. You want to pull it away at a right angle, and that way you won't tear the paper. And it comes off relatively, relatively easily. They like said it's not the plexi doesn't work quite as well as I actually really like. The um, the uh, canvas board and adhering this to paper and not worrying about the ripping of paper. But that is our little painting of uh, Helgar of the Wisewood. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to get something out of it. And uh, we'll be back again next week with something new and different and interesting. For you to paint or draw. Thank you very much for stopping by. Again, my name is Lynn Hunter. Like the video, please subscribe, and I really appreciate your being here. Thanks again. Bye-bye.